Welcome to section 2.1 called a new vector product. Specifically, this is about the geometric product. But in chapter one, we studied the scalar product and the outer product. In two dimensions, we also showed how to interpret the complex product of Z and W's conjugate. The scalar term in the inner product of the two vectors represents the points in the complex plane and the imaginary term records their directed area, which was proven in the last chapter. Now the idea for a new vector product was to replace the imaginary term with the outer product. And the result is the geometric product, which states that for vectors A and vectors B and vector B, it's equal to the scalar of the two vectors plus the outer product of the two vectors, which represents that this is the sum between a scalar and a bivector. Now that there's no longer an imaginary term, how should we view the right side of the equation? How do we interpret this? This actually reveals that the imaginary component is in fact a bivector. We'll find that geometric algebra will eventually provide all the functions of complex arithmetic, and as will also be discovered, geometric algebra also encompasses quaternion. Now from the symmetry and anti-symmetry of the geometric products terms, we can prove right here that if you reverse the order of the geometric product, if you commute it, then you get this negative sign in front of the outer product because this is an anti-symmetric term. It thus follows that you can represent each term as a combination of the geometric product. Now for representing the geometric product of parallel vectors, this actually ends up turning out to be a scalar, which just real quick as a visualization. If you remember, the inner product looks at two vectors and so that's not very straight, but it overlays one vector onto another and then it multiplies what the magnitude of these two vectors would be, giving you a scalar. And so if you have vectors that are just parallel to each other, then it's just the same thing as taking their magnitudes times each other, which is kind of what you have visual or uh, written down right here. So the geometric product of a parallel vector only returns a scalar, no bivector. Now the geometric product of a perpendicular vector is opposite. If they're perpendicular, then they're gonna have no contributions for the scalar product, and so they're only going to give bivectors. And so right here, you can represent it. This orient, it creates an oriented plane. If you multiply A, if you have A first, and then B right here, this doesn't look perpendicular, but it creates an oriented plane in this specific configuration. And then right here, if you switch the order, then it's like this, B, A. And then it has an opposite orientation, which ends up being the negative sign. And I don't know why this is here. That's not actually supposed to be there. But anyway, this means that the orthogonal vectors are anti-commuting. Final thoughts are basically the geometric product is an excellent way to encode both the scalar and the outer products and is a fantastic replacement of the cross product because it can be visualized in multiple dimensions, not just the third dimension. So yeah, it's very useful. Thank you for watching. In the next chapter or the next section, we'll be going over a basic outline of geometric algebra and what, what exactly it is. This was not an introduction of geometric algebra in this uh, video. It was only an introduction of the geometric product.